Hello, my friends. I wanted to make a video after um, a session I had with a private client yesterday. Now, this is one of my clients that I have in yoga practice, yoga and meditation and breathing exercises and all of what's part of the yogic practice, really. And um, she um, made a comment yesterday that had me thinking and that made me want to come on here because I think that this is something very common. And I'll get back to that in just a second. Before I get into that specific case, I want you to look up, if you've never heard of it, the expression high functioning depression. Because when she spoke to me about how she functions, I said to her, you're not depressed, but what you were describing sounds just like high functioning something or depression. And the high functioning depression is um, a state of depression that we are in that we manage to adapt into so that we can still actually do basically everything else like we usually would. So this means that we're basically functioning just like normal, like anyone else, but we are having this lingering depression underneath. And it might even sound to some of you that it doesn't um, seem to be then so severe or so bad. But that's where we're mistaken, you see, because actually what's really dangerous with high functioning depression is that neither the person or the people around them tend to know that the person is depressed and it goes on for a very long time. And because we're so good at adaptation, our compensatory mode that we're in will slowly but surely exhaust all our resources until we're completely depleted. And I think one of the most dangerous part of it is that the person is functioning normally, yet it feels as if nothing, like really nothing, has a point. Okay. And of course, these are also the kind of people who end up taking action at some point. Um, not all of them, obviously, but the people who take action about their own life in a more negative way, where everyone around afterwards will say, I had no idea. So this is why it's def uh, dangerous. Now, my um, client from yesterday is not depressed. Uh, sh however, she is um, suffering from a very fragile nervous system, okay? So she has what I would instead call then a high-functioning nervous response. Um, we've met already years ago, and we have um, recently worked together. And over the years, um, we've still been following each other a little bit. So I know, I know the kind of lifestyle she has and what kind of person she is. Now we're talking about people who um, are quite A-type personalities. So uh, professionally, they are very engaged in what they're doing. This person, for instance, has her own company and was recently in the process of purchasing another company. And it's also usually people who tend to um, let their own health kind of be a detriment of detriment to the rest of life. And so basically not really seeing, to be honest, the value in um, investing in their own personal health too much for a long time, right? And so this is absolutely the case for my um, student, uh, my um, client and what student, if you will. And what happened was that um, she started to have these symptoms Symptoms that are very typical of a highly responsive uh, nervous system, but that is so well adapted that we manage anyway. And so this means that she started to notice uh, difficulties in maintaining um, her body weight, even though she was working out and even though she was doing this and that and being quite cautious about what she was eating but she would compensate because she was depleted. So she would actually eat more than she needed and she would e easily reach for the sugar and the fatty things, of course, because when we're depleted, when we are exhausting our resources, what do we feel? Well, we feel exhausted of our energy and high sugar and fat, of course, that will um, refill on energy quite quickly. So that's why we reach for that as well. 
She also then noticed that she would have difficulties with sleep and she would even wake up in the during middle of the night with um, a cleansed jaw, okay? And cleansed jaw and she would have tightness in her neck. She would experience also uh, migraines and all of these things. So her um, body shape, her sleep patterns, what she would actually eat, and um, different kinds of ailments that she would experience then like migraines are all signs of her nervous system telling her that she's not listening to the signals but she's adapting so well into it that she still manages to maintain all of the rest so she maintains her marriage uh, they can maintain you know taking care of their kids perfectly taking care of their home perfectly um, having a company that's functioning really well, maybe even then going into the purchase of another company, these kind of things. So on the outside, it seems as if everything just works. Yet on the inside, you are slowly but surely breaking yourself down. So some of the signs that we noticed, except for these big signs that I've just, just um, explained to you, we also notice that we find it really challenging to be still, for instance, and we notice as well that breathing is not something that comes natural to us. So, of course, we all breathe without thinking about it, but it is when we're starting to try to actually focus on the breathing and to control the breathing that we notice that we're having a hard time. So, for instance, taking a nice and deep, deep inhale, is really enjoyable for the person. However, the exhalation will be quite poor and short and shallow. Why is this? When we inhale, we're still stimulating the fight and flight response or the sympathetic nervous response. And when we're exhaling, we're stimulating the rest and digest or the parasympathetic nervous response. So naturally, a person that is constantly living on this high functioning response from a nervous system will be really enjoying taking in a lot of oxygen but will not be very good at slowly slowly exhaling and keeping a steady and thick uh, flow of the exhalation and these were just a few of the things that we noticed as we work together in our sessions now let me also say that in our sessions we focus on really slow movements. The idea is to do more of what would be called a yin yoga practice. We start with some breathing exercises, some tuning in, some mindfulness exercises about sounds and smells and things like that in order to actually sink into the moment. And as we go through the poses, we also then notice when the nervous response starts to switch back onto the rest and digest. It is, for instance, when all of a sudden the shoulders come down, or when we notice that all of a sudden it is a little bit easier to take a long and deep and really quality kind of exhalation. So, what does this say about us? It says that we are living in a society, we all know this, of course, but it needs to be said over and over again. A society where we adapt into the conditions instead of having the conditions adapting into us and it's even promoted to do so which is why of course it's so socially accepted to take in a lot of caffeine and alcohol and all these things warming up with coffee cooling down with alcohol or a glass of wine some time back I um, had actually suggested to my um, client to look into the work of Libby Weaver, Dr. Lobby, Libby Weaver from New Zealand, who works specifically on these matters, more specifically for women. And she had this book that I read years ago and that I always recommend to people that's just called the rushing woman syndrome. And it's all about this actually. And what's so hard when we're so highly functioning in this is that it feels as if we cannot step out of this mode or else everything will crumble around us. And this is why I so embrace and really want to promote the Ayurvedic practices, because the Ayurvedic practices are made to be easily implemented. It is a routine 
that doesn't need to be extreme in any way. It's not expensive. It's accessible to everyone and it's done with regularity. So we start small and we've noticed already early on the changes which will motivate us to sustain them and to continue. And really what I just wanted to end this talk with was that it is precisely what I have put together in the program that I've just now created at the end of the year 2021 where I focus on Ayurveda and psychology, since I noticed through the podcast that people really appreciate the combination of the two, because it is this way to changing your nervous response, this highly functioning nervous response, and to use the understanding of how the mind functions with habit formation in order to make these changes sustainable and to stick with them. So if this sounds interesting to you, if you feel like maybe you are someone like most of us might be actually a little bit of a highly functioning nervous response, then simply send me a direct message, Ayurveda, and I will get in touch to give you more information about the program. Have a wonderful week, everyone. Stay calm.